Uh, so yeah, that's a that's a really great question. Uh, is it designed for prototyping or, or real world applications? I think that's something that me and Brandon really have to flesh out right now, um, because that's come up a, a couple of times. Which is, you know, can uh, you know when we release this framework, um, can Coke take it and 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 make uh, a website with it? Um, and I I don't know the answer to that yet. I I know that on the wiki right now. We have everything as uh, Creative con uh, Commons, share, share alike, but not for commercial use. And I think that's just how we've set it up now until we have a real, um, a real discussion in, in, uh, uh, at Flash on the Beach. I, I think the main reason is because uh, we've been working on this for a month, and it's, it's you know, uh, we're putting a, a ton of work into it, and so... You know, the question is, is like, okay, cool, you put all this work into this framework, and then, um, uh, you know, p potentially people can make money on it. And I think me and Brandon kind of have to come to terms with um, how we deal with that. I think it's more of a more of a Brandon issue than me because I'm like, I'm I'm into anarchy. You know, fuck it, I just want everything to be free and and burn. But uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what Brandon says. Uh, you know, uh, what has been Adobe's response about concerns of sketchability in Flash? Uh, do they see it as an actual problem? Uh, you know, I, I don't, I've never talked to them about it. I just know that um, one day I woke up and CS4 was out and uh, AS3 was here and I felt like I had to learn the language all over again. And, uh, you know, here's a guy who has been using Flash for, you know, 10 plus years. And uh, I even wrote a book on Flash. And I found myself on Google saying, you know, what is this in AS3? Uh, because, I, you know, I, I had some growing pains of, of moving over in, uh, into the new language. So I know for me it, it was a real issue because, you know, all of a sudden something that used to be easy and stupid um, was now painful, you know, uh, the amount of setup that I actually had to do in AS3 in order to sketch um, uh, was taking longer. And uh, then I've got friends like, you know, Ben Fry and Casey Reese who uh, uh, invent this thing called processing. And, you know, so they send me their book because, you know, they, you know, wrote a little hello to me in the book. And so I'm looking at the book one night and, and, uh, and sure enough, like you know, I sit. I'm sitting on the couch with my laptop, and um, you know, ten pages into the book, I'm making cool stuff. And so, and I realized that processing and open frameworks, and uh, there's some some other things uh, happening, like VVVV on PC and Nodebox on Mac, were these environments that allowed um, artists and designers to sketch really quickly. And I and I realized that that this was something that I desired inside of inside of uh, inside of flash so I guess to, to answer that question I I think Adobe really doesn't care um, I don't know if they have um, have really considered it or maybe they have maybe they haven't it, it's something that I haven't had a discussion uh, with them about uh, I, I do understand their business model which is you know we we're now working in uh, an environment of the internet that's a lot about social media and you have things like PHP and Ruby on Rails and you have these in, uh, environments to make uh, really robust uh, web 2.0 uh, environments and I think flash uh, I'm sorry, Adobe really ne needed to step up uh, Flash in order to compete um, as a platform for rich internet applications. But with that said, you know, I I've certainly said to the Flash team uh, on several times that um, they forgot about the girl that they brought to the prom, which is, uh, you know, I kind of feel like I was their prom date and Flash is off dancing with another girl. Um, so that's that's kind of been my response to that. So I don't I, I, I honestly don't know what their response is. I, I have never had the conversation with them. I just know that I have my own personal need as as an artist, and you have to understand that I also teach at the School of Visual Arts. So you know I, I'm taking on you know 20 students each semester, and I see them frustrated uh, with. Um, the amount of code that they have to write 
um, and just in order to do do things uh, that would seem simple, or at least that were simple in the past. So uh, I don't know their response. I just know my response, which is, you know, I need this thing that can do all this heavy lifting for me that I can reuse. And I want to be able to, to take a lot of different things and have them all group hug to kind of create these, um, uh, these super behaviors. So, um, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know what Adobe thinks. I just know what Josh thinks, and I think Josh thinks that this is a good thing. Okay. No, this is actually, uh, it's, it's for both of us. Um, we actually had a conversation uh, a couple of days ago about uh, performance issues. And so what was happening was specifically with the ex exit box trigger. Um, and you'll see this on the wiki. Uh, on the wiki, I had uh, basically raised the issue that uh, exit box trigger was using an interval and was constantly um, creating numbers and creating objects um, over a period of time. And what would happen is, is that if you left that window open and you went to lunch uh, and you came back, uh, the memory had leaked significantly and, you know, your, your thing was going like one frame per second. So uh, to actually handle that, you'll notice on the wiki that one of the things that we're implementing is actually an image pool. So uh, one of the uh, classes uh, that you'll be able to, um, to use inside of Hype is to actually create an image pool and say, um, these are the number of assets that I want to draw, but I want to draw these assets in this particle system. So rather than constantly using an interval uh, to spit out particles, um, actually the image pool will spit out the particles. And because the image pool will be a, a defined number of objects, we actually don't get any memory issues because we're basically recycling. So uh, yeah, know that uh, CPU, issue, uh, CPU issues have, uh, have, have been on the top of our list. And uh, we hope that the, the image pool uh, will be a good solution rather to use rather than using something like uh, an interval to uh, uh, in conjunction with particle systems. Yeah, <laughs> cool. If you guys could please show Josh your appreciation. Right on. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Hopefully, uh, again, if I would just say if anybody has any questions offline. Oh. Okay. Hey. <laughs> hey, and I, I would just say that I'm uh, I'm totally approachable. Uh, I do answer my email, uh, and so if anybody has any uh, questions. Uh, please free uh, to email me, and uh, specifically if you're thinking about attending the uh, the workshop, and uh, you want to know if you're a good fit or, or uh, uh, right for the workshop, I'll be more than happy to answer as many questions as I can in terms of what we're going to cover and what you'll walk away with. Um, what's nice that I would say is, is that you're going to walk away with a crap load of stuff because because these behaviors are so short and sweet again, we're able to sketch and rapid prototype actually very quickly. So the amount of work that we'll do in, in two days, I'm, I'm hoping will be pretty astronomical. Yeah, so again, uh, please email me if, if you have any questions and I'll, and I'll try to uh, give you a good idea of, of, uh, of what to expect and I hope to see you in a, in a couple of weeks. Right on. Yeah, have a good night.